We are resting in being knowingly. We are abiding as the self. Yes, absolutely. We abide prior to the phenomena. We rest like in the beginning of the meeting. We give ourselves that time to go back to the source and allow from there things to re-emerge freshly, newly. And everything that has been kind of a bit mishmashed in the chaos can find its place back to its source and its resolution. But we don't stop there. Because in my experience, personally, and what I'm seeing, working more and more, meeting more and more people, is that this non-dual understanding, this glimpse of our nature, when it comes, it often doesn't stick. It doesn't stay. Somehow, we have an authentic understanding, an authentic recognition of ourselves, of being this luminous, loving, unchanging, peaceful, always okay awareness. And still a phone call from someone telling us bad news or something, little things usually, and somehow we forget. We forget and we panic, so to speak, and we act from the conditioning, from the sense of separation. Again, traditionally these are called binding vasanas, tendencies lifelong, or God knows how many lives long, adapted strategies, tendencies in the mind and in the body. This is the bondage that we know and still we get caught in acting, speaking, feeling based on what we know is not true, but still we do it. We can't help it. Why not? Because there is this binding quality to this tendency. And especially on the level of feeling, which now seems to become very present. It's like there's so much going on, so much intensity that these feelings just trying to find their way out. It's hard to continue with the old strategy of suppressing for some of us at least, especially those who make the way into satsang. So these old pockets of separation, I call them sometimes, these binding vasanas, these old feelings, these old thoughts based on me being a separate person, they create a, a huge load a shadow, as it's called in Jungian psychology, that has a huge weight. It's like real, it feels like luggage. It makes the body heavy. 
It makes the mind heavy. And this Lord in the body and in the mind somehow prevents us to hold firm to the understanding, to our experience of ourselves being this light, luminous, timeless, lightless, weightless being. We may experience it in satsang or in some good moments. And it's so clear and we know it's like, oh, wow, I am that. And then maybe through our yoga meditations or some other way, making love, or we experience ourselves in this weightless, floating experience of our true body, of our luminous, transparent body. And it's like, oh, it's so good. It's so light. Everything is so easy. I actually don't really have problems, even I have to attend to the world. It's all quite a shit show, but not really so dramatic as it seems. So many of us have those deep insights, these experiences, and still this unaddressed luggage that many, 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 many of us carry now. We are coming to the point of the cycle in the dream where it seems we've been accumulating quite a bit as souls. So we are confronted, if we want or not, we are confronted with this heavy load. So in theory, we can just rest in being, we can just be what we are and, and let that perfume, like in our satsangs, hopefully penetrate our bodies, our minds, our world, our friends. And it works. But somehow often we don't manage when we're not in satsang or when we have to deal and, and work with different difficult people or with family or so on struggles in the body. So here we take into consideration to contribute with our avatars, which in reality is universal consciousness using its own intelligence to contribute. We don't dismiss like radical non-duality, the avatar, it's all, you're just that and just stay that and that's it. That's one approach, but it's not our approach. We do our best to contribute to lessen the load, to lessen the weight of that luggage. So we not only rest purely in being, we actually welcome those feelings of separation. We welcome those negative thoughts. We, we shine the light of consciousness on them. We address the feeling in the body of feeling separate or feeling heavy. We contribute in lessening the load and that includes that everyone is very welcome here to meditate, to practice yoga, to practice qigong, to practice conscious relating, non-violent communication. Everything is part of it, if seen in the context of non-dual understanding of what reality is. 
but none of that is dismissed because many approaches, psychology, psychotherapy, in some cases, if we don't enforce the idea of the separate me exclusively and we find a maybe a therapist a non-dual therapist it's a new stream growing for 20 years or so a wonderful approach some therapists have such a deep understanding themselves that they can bring that into therapeutic work and help to release deep knots trauma in the body, in the mind, and help to release that load, which then contributes to have the non-dual understanding available, so to speak. And it's like a vicious, no, like a virtuous, that's the right word. The vicious circle is something else we speak some other time about. So it's like a virtuous circle, it like contributes, it's like the understanding gets deeper through satsang and through applying the teachings and finding ways to lessen that load through addressing the body, addressing the mind, welcoming all of that. And the load gets lighter, and then with a lighter load, it's easier for me to remain consciously what I am. And when I remain consciously what I am, I can address the separate feeling, the pain, much lighter again. So we kind of amplify in that way to be what we are. consciously in our experience with our avatar in the world while not being in the world we can live from this experiential understanding and we don't get caught or we get caught less and less by those pockets of separation, those feelings, those thoughts that had the power in the past to convince us that we are this separate entity that we have this problem 